Hi, this is Cynthia Horner from Right on Digital, and I am here with Keon Clark, who is going to talk to us today about this wonderful new series called SkyMed. Yeah. And so, first of all, you play the character Tristan, mm -hmm. and you are a flight medic. Yes, correct. So can you tell me how you got the role and what this role is all about? Okay, well, how I got the role, well, I, I obviously had to audition, but um, it's funny because I was preparing, I spent the whole day preparing for another audition and I kind of, in my, I guess, like all the time I spent preparing for that audition, I forgot that I had the SkyMed audition. So like my oh friend my was God. helping me. Yeah. <laughs> My, my friend Kareem, shout out to Kareem, um, he was helping me and he was like, he had to go home and I noticed, like, oh crap, like I have this other audition. So I'm like, all right, just give me like 10 minutes. I'm going to cram these lines in and, and uh, hope for the best, right? And uh, he just, I, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was like the writing or just like the, it was just, just everything just like fell into place. I hit everything in one take and it felt good and I sent it off and <laughs> Two weeks later, I was pinned, and then there's a contract talk, and <laughs> next thing you know, we're, we're, we're shooting in Winnipeg. So, um, yeah, that was amazing. And I guess what it means, sorry, you said what, what the role means to me? Or Yes. What is okay, it well, like? Mm -hmm. what, what it's like, well, it's interesting. Um, when we first got there, we had to do a whole bunch of training, like for the pilots, they had to, uh, spend a significant amount of time actually like learning as much as they can about like operating like a, a, a flight aircraft. So obviously it would be believable in the show. And the same thing for the nurses, we had to spend, uh, I think like two days of uh, like, uh, like training and like medical training and like how to properly do CPR, um, administer anesthesia and all that kinds of stuff. So we could you know, be believable on screen and make it seem like we know what we're talking about. But it was, yeah, it, it was an amazing experience. And uh, I guess for Tristan, um, he's, uh, I guess, one of the more experienced members on the team uh, compared to Haley Roberts, who just came into town. So he's kind of there showing everybody the ropes, but he's also kind of like the glue of the group when everyone's kind of going through their dramas. He's, uh, he's Mr. Positive or as uh, Julie and uh, Vanessa like to say, uh, sunshine on the cloudiest day. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Now, I want to ask you one more question about that whole audition process because the yeah. fact that you, <laughs> you had forgotten about it and you just kind of, you just made it happen. It's like the yeah. stars were aligned. Yeah. And it was meant for you to get the role. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people out here who love hearing stories about the different actors and actresses that they see on television, and they want to be able to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you have a lot of experience because if you didn't, you wouldn't have been able to get through that audition at kind of at the last minute. So mm -hmm. kind of tell us about what it's like um, pre preparing for these different roles. Because a lot of people, they see the finished product on TV. So they don't really know what the actors and actresses have gone through to make these characters come to life and to be able to learn a lot of lines as well as take direction sometimes at the last minute. Okay, well, I guess uh, I, I, if we're specifically talking about the, the SkyMed role, um, I have to give credit to uh, my acting studio, AMAW Vancouver, and they also have, uh, I guess their headquarters is in LA. Shout out to Anthony Mindel. Um, honestly, is uh, once you learn how to properly use subtext when you're preparing for your lines, like say, for example, you have your lines in front of you, it's all new material, like you read it over, like, three, maybe like four times, just to kind of like get as much information in your head. And then when you start uh, preparing it, you kind of have like another blank sheet of paper, like you'll put it over um, your line, you'll read the, the other character's line, and then 
you, with using subtext, you kind of have to, it may not necessarily be the exact words, but as long as you get like the gist of like what's happening and then, all right, okay, I'm closer, I'm closer, I'm closer. Then you do it a few more times and the lines just like sink in. And that, that way, like you have it in your head and you feel more free to, to play around with the, with the dialogue. So I guess I did that in a span of 10 minutes and I was like, all right, turn the lights on, put the camera up, let's shoot this thing. And uh, yeah, I guess it worked out. It just felt natural. It didn't feel like I was trying or thinking too hard about my next line. Everything just like flowed. Like you said, it just, it was just like a moment where like the stars aligned because normally for a role like this size and on a show, on a show this big, you would have to do like a callback session. And I guess they just really love what I did right off the bat. And they're just kind of like, yeah, you're the guy, you're Tristan. So honestly, I'm like really grateful and also lucky that, uh, that, that somehow like the universe was just like, all right, this is for you. We're gonna make this easier for you to absorb and boom, finished product. Now I'm Tristan on Skynet. Well, that is, that is really great. Now you've been in other series. Can you talk a little bit about a couple of um, the other se se series that you've been involved with? Oh, of course. Um, I guess what a story I'd say like uh, there was a Disney series I was on called Gabby Duran and the Incitables. And again, another magical story. Uh, I auditioned for the role and I ended up uh, getting information from my agent that I had booked the role on my birthday at the time. So that was kind of like special, a little bit of Disney magic right there. Wow, and, uh, your birthday. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was it, it was pretty cool. So like originally it was just supposed to be like a small actor role. I didn't even have a name. It was just like server. So I was uh, the server in their favorite taco restaurant. And I ended up having to like kick out two alien characters that were disguising themselves as humans because they were just being rude and I guess they the directors and the producers liked what I did so much just from that one it was supposed to be just a one day thing and they ended up writing me in the show and I was on the show for the full two seasons so yeah uh shout out to Gabby Duran and the Incitables uh I think season one right now is on Disney plus and I'm hoping that they'll drop season two on Disney plus as well but that was uh, obviously like a, another magical experience. And um, uh, there's been a few other shows I've been on, but uh, one that stuck out to me the most is uh, my role on Riverdale. I played this character named T-Dub. He's uh, Veronica's like a friend from New York uh, when she ran like a jewelry store. So I was, on, I was on Riverdale for a couple episodes. And again, like just amazing cast, like great vibes, everyone in between takes like, cracking jokes like just like very like light energy so when the cameras roll like everyone is kind of like re like relaxed and like loose and can just like play in front of the camera but yeah the Riverdale cast although they I think they're they canceled it now but after a few great seasons so uh I'm just happy to be I was just honestly happy to be a part of that and yeah well you're doing amazing work now Thank you. um Tell me about your physical fitness routine, because I think that when you're on these shows, you've got to have stamina. You also have to have discipline so that you don't eat everything that craft services puts out for you. So, <laughs> can you talk about that? Well, I guess I don't know if you want to get like scientific, but like, uh, I guess I figured out that like my body type is, uh, do you know the difference between like ectomorph and endomorph? No? Yeah. Okay. So like, um, I'm endomorph, so it's easy for me to build muscle, um, compared to like all my other like skinnier friends that they got to like take all these like protein supplements to just to make like moderate gains. But like, luckily I was blessed with uh, my family's genetics. I can build muscle very fast, but a downside of that is if I kind of fall off of it, of it a bit, like I can get big. So, uh, it's all about like, uh, like it's all about what you eat and um yes there's a lot of donuts and candies and stuff on set and it's very tempting to you know just like pick up a donut oh it's just one donut it's not gonna not gonna bother you and a one donut turns to five you know <laughs> uh so like you know you just gotta have like the discipline to stay away from that 
Uh, I only drink water. Uh, I don't, I try to stay away from sugar and, um, you know, stretching, especially like if you got to do um, like some action scenes, obviously I, well, I didn't do too many of like my own stunts, but you know, you just got to try to look the part and like be physically fit enough. If they need you to run, <laughs> you can run, you know, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Now, how old were you when you first wanted to get into acting? Honestly, since I was a little kid, probably like I, I immigrated to Canada from Jamaica when I was five. And uh, the first movie that made me actually like want to be an actor was, uh, I don't know if you remember, this is like way back in the, in the day in the early 90s, there's a movie called The Little Rascals. Yep. Yeah, that was like my favorite movie. I watched that movie maybe like a hundred times. I knew everybody's lines. I would like, I was able to quote every character's lines word for word. And I was just kind of like, you know, just like a fun kids movie. They had go-karts. It was all kinds of craziness. There was like, they had a club, the He-Man Woman Haters Club. Well, obviously it wouldn't be politically correct now, but uh, you know, um, yeah. So that was like the first movie that made me want to be, an actor and my parents weren't really into it. They're just like, oh, you're just a little kid, just focus on school, like get rid of this idea out of your head. But yeah, I, I kind of felt like I was running from it. Um, I have uh, my my career experiences and I worked in journalism and media, like surprisingly, I don't, I don't know if I ever mentioned this before. So I have a background in, in radio and like broadcasting. So I was doing everything but my actual dream. And then uh, I think less than four years ago, I quit my radio job and I decided to just take the leap and go for it. And whatever happens, happens. And I'm thankfully that uh, that risk worked out. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That is a yeah. great story. Now tell me, what are some of your favorite hobbies and interests? Um, right now uh biking the seawall like i live in vancouver and there's obviously like a like a lot of like ocean and like mountains and mm -hmm. and downtown vancouver we have like a seawall so like i'd like to ride my bike just kind of like take in the atmosphere especially on a nice like sunny day uh my gym's just like around the corner so i guess that's really much like kind of like a hobby and uh basketball there's like a few basketball courts just kind of like down the street from me and there's always like some guys there or some girls or whatever that, you know, just, just want to hoop just uh, just staying, just staying active. Just so basketball, gym, biking the seawall as, as of right now. And then obviously like watching movies and stuff. I'm trying to think of another hobby. Um, I love history. History was one of my favorite subjects in school. So like, uh, I like watching like historical documentaries, like on Napoleon and all these other historical figures. And then sometimes once I'm finished the documentary, I'll, I'll do my own research and kind of like, I don't know, I'm like to my, in my friends group, sometimes they'll call me Mr. Google because I have a lot of like random facts about things, whether it's history or like random science facts or like nature. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm that person. I'm that person in the friends group. Uh, I can be maybe annoying a bit, like, uh, yeah, shut up. Like, we don't care, but like, I don't know, I'm always spewing out like random facts. So I like, even though I'm a little older, I, I think my thirst for knowledge and learning has like never left. So, yeah. Oh, you I had some great stories to tell and they call me Miss Encyclopedia because I know everything <laughs> too. So before we go, I would like to ask you a couple of grooming questions because we have a lot of male readers slash viewers on our site. And they enjoy finding out what the different actors do for their skincare routine and beards <laughs> and hair and stuff. Skincare, beards, and hair. Okay. Um, I guess for my skincare routine, like I said before, I kind of stay away from sugary drinks like sodas and stuff. I have water with me right here. Um, I, okay. Don't judge me for this, but uh, have you ever heard of like a Kangen water machine? Um, yeah, my husband talks about that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, so it's really I water and pH and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I have a machine. Like, I've always been like more of like a water person. I can always tell the difference 
of kinds of water because some people are like, oh, it's just water. I can taste it. Like, no, no, there's a difference. <laughs> there's a difference between purified water. So like, even though this machine costs $5,000, uh, I'd rather spend that kind of money for something that could help me health wise for years to come instead of like, you know, like designer clothes and things of that nature. So I definitely, uh, so lots of water, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. It's good for the skin. Try to get some good sleep and uh, exfoliate. You got to exfoliate. And one of uh, the makeup lady, uh, Tina, shout out to Tina. She has a, a skincare line called uh, Lament. It's kind of like this um, uh, like chemical exfoliator. So you leave that on for a couple minutes, rinse it off, and then uh, you have the serum, this like this uh, citrus serum that I use. And uh, I think that, yeah, that's what's the main reason for, for my skin. As, but, you know, as, as a Black person yourself, they say Black don't crack, but I believe Black can crack if you don't take care of it. So, uh, that's yeah. So a good sound bite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for hair, um, you know, I just have like a little barbershop that I go to down the street from where I live. It's called uh, Junior's Barbershop. So every couple, every two to three weeks, I'll go get like a nice little taper, you know, just a little lineup edge up, keep the beard. I don't like to grow my beard out too much, but, um, you know, just to keep things nice and neat and presentable, as I like to say. So I don't really do too much, but I think the main thing is water and cutting down on like sugary drinks, because obviously like sugar, you can, like you can probably like break out and then and your skin will look not how you want it to look. So I'd rather just stick with uh, hydration and just just basic like good skincare routine and some sunshine. Sunshine's the key as well. Okay, well, I wanna thank you so much for this interview. Now tell us your social media handles that you'd like people to follow you on. Uh, okay, well, to me, I'm not that big of a social media person. So I only really have uh, Instagram, but my Instagram is Keon St. Michael Clark, all in one word. It's K-H-E-O-N. C L A R K E S T M I C H A E L. Oh, sorry, I said that wrong. <laughs> um, it's Keon St. Michael Clark. So K H E O N S T M I C H A E L C L A R K E. My apologies, I kind of got that mixed up, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again, and you have a great day, and you, you'll you enjoy seeing yourself on Right on Digital. Exactly. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Welcome. I really appreciate it. And um, don't forget, SkyMed Out Now, Paramount Plus, number one, number one streaming show on Paramount Plus in the U.S. right now. And for Canada, CBC Gym. Stream, stream, stream. You're going to love it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.